Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like you to give a warm welcome to Riley Sorincioni Lynch. <laughs> Hi guys, so for my capstone presentation, I am putting together an album, uh, but for this, this presentation, um, I'm just going to be showing the first song in the album. It's called Windmills and Banker Boys. Um, there, I didn't count the number of tracks, but there's a bunch of tracks. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is just play the song so you can hear it. And then I'll go through each of the sections, talk about the effects, talk about the layers. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to play it and uh, hopefully we got the audio working good. So here we go. That's the first song on the album. Um, so yeah, this main section up here, uh, this top two purple lines are the main guitars um, that I played with this. Um, they're panned left and right. And 
very sound like this. Those are just the main guitars. Uh, I've them with this, this, this box that plugs into my computer, and I plug a mic or guitar into here. Um, after I did that, I layered some of these keyboards. Um, there's two, there's this piano um, and this organ, and together they sound like that. Um, with everything. So that's the piano, that's the organ. Um, so those were the two main things that I layered on top of all of this. Um, for like transitions, there's some of these uh, small little, little reverb swells. Um, I'll solo both of these. Um, and they just lead into the transition sound like this. Just a little, little swell to lead into transitions. And for transitions, I'll just open everything up so you can see. Um, I like to have at least two things like cutting out and then two things coming in. So it sounds like a, it sounds like a real transition. So I have this uh, background guitar that plays in the beginning. Um, that cuts out after, after the intro. And then I have um, this clarinet coming in. And the vocals come in after the intro. And that's it for that. And then after that little section is where the percussion starts to come in. So there's a couple different things per percussion. Um, the main like shaker is this, um, which that part sounds like this. It's just going like that. Um, and then layered some other snaps and percussion. Um, it's tricky. So with the live percussion, I didn't have to do a lot of processing. There's just a EQ on here and some drum processing plugins. Um, and then I mixed it with some like electronic percussion, but it sounds pretty real. And I had to do a little more processing on that. So like this hi-hat that comes in later, um, I had to put some like transient shapers and some more drum processors just to like make it that, make it mesh with the live drums. So live drums, fake drums, it's hard to mix them. So I had to do a little processing there. Um, moving on after that section, the next like thing that comes in that's kind of cool is this vocal stack that I recorded. So I'll open that up and you can see the six tracks here. So this is just like a nice little chord vocal stack. And what I did for that is went through each of them. Um, and if it was like a lower note, I'd kind of make the, the lower frequencies present. And then for the higher notes, I'd make the higher frequencies present. Um, so there wasn't too much overlapping and, and crunchy sounding things. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the vocals. So this is the main vocal track and you can see it's all like chopped up. Um, basically that's because of breaths. So um, if I solo this. Windmills and banker boys spinning around. So those breaths, I didn't, I didn't edit that one, but I didn't want to cut out the breaths completely. So I, I made a cut and then sort of faded them. So they were just quieter um, and they weren't like a huge like <gasps> sound. Um, so that's, that's why it's all chopped up. And then for vocal processing, there's an EQ on here just to cut out some of the low frequencies, boost some of the mids, cut out some of the highs. Um, there's this mic preamp, um, there's some multiband compression, which sounds complicated, but basically there's three frequency ranges, this high, middle, and low, and it'll sort of squash that or, or bring it out. Um, and another EQ, um, this is a de -er, So when you're recording into a mic, there's a lot of harsh like sounds, like S's. Um, so what that does is it tames those S's without, without taming the rest of the track. Um, this just brings out some of the highs. 
Um, and then here's a reverb to make it sound all, all nice and, and reverby. Um, so without all those effects, it sounds like a lifetime of mayhem. I want to be a okay, little um, kid and go back to the playpen. That's with the effects. So that is the vocal processing. Um, the other thing that I added for the intro and the outro is this, um, I just call it a noise. It's basically just like ambient sounds. So the beginning one is like an ocean. And then the one at the end, uh, it's like this, this waterfall that fades into this, this other ocean that I, that I pitched down, I think a little bit. And that just adds, just some noise to the track so it doesn't sound so sparse. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was automations. So if I bring up all these automation lanes, um, you can kind of see some of the stuff that I did. So the main thing on the guitar, here's one of the guitars, and you'll see this EQ is kind of grayed out. Um, when I play it from the beginning, you'll see it enables and then it, uh, oh, I have something soloed, hold on. Um, so let me solo the guitars. So in the beginning, this uh, on, you can see is on here, but then after the intro, this will cut out. Yeah, you can see it stopped. Um, so that just changes the sound of the guitar. I wanted to have like a different guitar sound for the intro um, versus the rest of the track. So I just added that EQ and then the automation um, was just turning it on and off. Um, but there is a little more interesting automation like other places in the track. Um, a lot of it's just volume. So like this uh, clarinet track, there's some volume automation here. So it, uh, if I solo this, um, this automation will just, it's just, yeah, this line's going down and it's just decreasing in volume. Um, that's the majority of the automation. Uh, same thing with the vocals. I wanted the first like syllable of the vocal to like really stand out. So I increased the volume right there and then it just goes back down. Uh, for the rest of the track and same thing at the end since there are less instruments at the end the vocal sounded kind of loud how it was so i brought down the volume here with the automation um so anything else in automation i want to talk about i think that's it i didn't do too much automation on this um so yeah i'll go through all the tracks one by one so I, like i said these are the two main guitars they're panned to make it sound kind of wider um there's the reverb swells there's a sort of background guitar. This is a little cool section. I don't even remember how I made this, um, but this is what it sounds like. I think it sounds kind of cool. So that's just three guitar tracks. Nice little background guitar. Um, the processing on this is pretty simple. Um, on the bus, there's nothing on this guitar, there's some compression, some reverb, uh, EQ. Um, there's a little bit more on this. This is a this is a compressor, but it's more of like a like a colorful compressor. It's not just for the compressing the volume. It adds a little character to the sound. But that's it for that. Um, I can talk about the effects on the main like piano and organ too. Um, one of the things I really like to do with like guitar and piano sounds is add tape emulations. So this is a tape emulation. Um, if I solo this piano, um, I've got to find a place where the piano is actually playing. Um, so like here. So this tape emulation is doing a couple different things. So there's these different cassette styles. I don't know how many people know about like cassette tapes, um, but it sort of like degrades the quality of the sound a little bit, um, which sounds like a bad thing, but it can be kind of a good thing when you want to like glue everything together in the mix. Um, and there's also a little bit of distortion uh, just to bring up the volume. 
um, some different parameters there. Um, there's another instance of a tape emulation, a different one. Um, and basically this is adding like some wobble to the sound. So it's not just flat all the way through. There's a little more distortion and a little bit of reverb. Um, and that is pretty much all of it. Um, just going through the tracks, I don't think I missed anything. Background guitar, there's the piano, there's the organ, there's all this percussion. Oh yeah, um, I don't know, where did my kendama go? Oh, it's over there. So I recorded a kendama for this actually. Um, this, these like clicks, like that click, that, I don't remember what exactly I did, but it was basically just like going like that into a mic. Um, and I just, <laughs> it doesn't add too much to the sound, uh, but I just thought that was an interesting thing. Um, and then, yeah, there's some other percussion. There's some snaps, there's uh, the hi-hats, the shakers, um, the reverb swells that I was talking about. This is a cool little uh, like bell med melody that has a, reverb swell before it, I can play that. Um, we'll swell and then some bells. Um, the other main thing is I record an electric guitar. I was gonna bring it, but I didn't. Um, so there are just some electric guitar stabs. Um, sound pretty nice. Uh, for the electric guitar processing, there's actually quite a bit on here. There's EQ compression. Uh, this is kind of another tape emulation, but just a little less uh, parameters. Then this is the guitar amp that I used. It was free, so that's great. Um, and then just making it a little bit wider. And then there's the main vocals and the vocal stack. And that is the whole song. So... If anyone has any questions about any of that, if you're like, <laughs> minutes for uh, some questions for Riley. If you're online, uh, go ahead and you can put, type your questions into the chat, and I can read them out loud for you. Who's got a question for Riley? Yeah. yeah. Where, you Where you find this? Okay. okay, so. Um, I'm still, I'm still putting, putting together, together the rest of the songs for the album, for the album um, and, and I'm going to put it out. It should be on Spotify. Spotify. Like, it, it'll, it'll take a while. So, like, so like I'm going to say, I'll put, I'll put it on, on, I'll put it on YouTube, YouTube also. also. Um, I'd, I'd say, say like, like July, July, August. August. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And under what, what is it just under your name on YouTube and Spotify? Or, or yeah, yeah. Uh, Riley CL on Spotify. I have a song on there. There's another one coming out unrelated to this album in June. So, so go listen, listen to that, that and then, then yeah, yeah Riley, Riley right. CL, CL on YouTube, YouTube I think. So, so we, 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 we have, there. right, we have the persona, Riley CL. There's right? some stuff, there's some stuff on so there. So that's yeah. where you're going to look for him, man. Riley CL on any social media coming near you. Who else has a question? Uh, Bo. Well, would you ever indulge us and play some of that song just to play the Yeah, so this is in a different key, but basically the main guitar is like those are the main chords um and then there's some other there's some other chords in there too but uh that's the, that's the main thing yeah, so this is a classical guitar. guitar. I snapped half of the strings accidentally um, and tuned it to this interesting three notes. Um, and I, I never changed them. I snapped one of the strings once and I went into Downtown Sounds and asked them to replace just the singular string and they were very confused. They were like, do you want me to replace all the strings? I was like, no, just the one. I just want three strings on it. Um, so that was interesting, but yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the main guitar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions? Ken, did you have a question? Yeah, did you write this song? Um, I had the lyrics 
I had the lyrics written um, before, but for all these songs, I had some of the lyrics written. I wrote some of the songs during the process, but the main thing was recording all of it and producing all of it. I didn't have anything recorded or anything, anything produced or arranged like that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're asking questions, try to speak as loud as possible so the online people can hear the question. And okay. can also yeah, I can also repeat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Riley, R I L E Y, and then C O. Yeah, it should come up. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you so much. Um, anything else? Anybody? No. Are there any questions in the Zoom? So, well, actually, I have a comment from the Zoom uh, from someone named Jay Cran who says, I came here because my daughter Gigi is next, but I am so glad I came early. Nice job, Riley. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for coming early. I, I have just a couple of questions. Um, yeah. So this is quite a, so this is, you're using, um, what's the name of the app here? Uh, Ableton, Ableton Live. Ab Ableton Live. So when did you first encounter Ableton Live? When did you first start working with it? So, so shout, shout out to, out to the great teacher, great teacher at this high school, school Paul Kinsman. Kinsman. He runs, he runs music, production music production class. class. So, so before, before taking, taking this class, class um, I took I took this class, class what two two, two years ago. Um, I, had I had no idea, idea what Ableton was, was or how to do any of this, um, and he showed me like the basics. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get to finish, finish that class in person, person because that was the year that, that COVID hit, so we had to finish the class online, online. Uh -huh. um, which, which was disappointing. But uh, it was a great great foundation that he gave me for using this program, and then I I kept learning did the rest of my own talk to right. about things yeah. yeah so this is so this is a tool that you started using in class but now you're using for your own purpose um yes. this is so much layering right yeah um, how many elements would you say are in this piece that you individual elements Ooh. uh i can count them for you real quick <laughs> no, you, you can estimate we, we we don't it's not a math, we're, we're not doing a math presentation 20 30 yeah some, some yeah like that. Um, as you were composing this song, how did how did your composition of the song begin? Where, where did what did you begin with in your mind, or, or, or yeah. finding the tune? So, so how, how I had the song written was just just, just, just that, that guitar part, part that I played. played. Um, so, so this main, like I said, I said, these main two, two guitars, guitars, which is they're, they're exactly, exactly the same. same. They're just different processing. Um, these go through the whole song, and that's the only thing. It's the only instrument that goes through the whole song, and that's that's the same for the rest of the songs on my capstone because. Usually I write the song first and then record it. So I need some instrument to play all the way through. Right. Um, so that went all the way through. And then it was the piano and the organ and, and yeah. yeah. Cool. Went from there. Um, and By the way, thank you for the comment from online. I forgot to, I have to keep myself muted when Riley's talking. I'm sorry to create that echo. Right now I'm unmuted for the question. Um, so the, uh, as you were creating this, you worked for the first, those first tracks. As you were adding other tracks, did you already have a strong idea of how many other pieces you wanted to add, or did this really evolve? Yeah, I really had no idea. Um, I, you know, I'd add different stuff, um, and then the stuff that I had originally would sound different, so I had to tweak that, and then I'd add another thing, and then this stuff sounded different, so I had to tweak it again, and then I just kept layering, and um, like I said, I try to have like, at least two things going out before a transition and then two things coming in after the transition. So that's sort of how I tried to yeah. estimate the amount of things that I would that I would have. And then just adding like different, like the reverb swells and different effects and stuff. Just, it's cool uh, watching the capstones and seeing some of the really interesting parallels going on. Uh, for example, yesterday, uh, Lars Sippel in his engineering presentation was talking about this iterative process of creating an idea, working with it, looking at it, then going back and reforming it and going around. It sounds like there really is a very iterative, iterative process to producing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I have a couple more comments. Sorry. I have a couple more comments to read uh, from online and then we'll be moving on. Uh, uh, congratulations, Riley. What a phenomenal job. That's from someone named Kirsten um, Cerincioni. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, from Hannah Kratt. Uh, oh, that's, you're echoing. Uh, and someone named Diane, I think it's Cerincioni. Wow, production is awesome. Excellent teaching skills displayed. Riley, love you over the moon. Aunt D. And finally from Jane Lynch, wonderful performance, tons of love. So it's time for us to move on, uh, but I really want to thank Riley for a very detailed and fascinating presentation. Everyone, a hand for Riley, Cerciani, Lynch.